The COVID pandemic taught us a lot of things. It taught us a lot about vaccines in general, not just the COVID vaccine, about how getting, say, MMR or polio or hep A shot isn't just doctor's orders or an errand to get done. They prevent disease from spreading generally in your community, protecting not just yourself, but the random people around you. As the school year approaches faster than we want, it's time to get your kids in for their mandatory shots. We talk with a public health professional about why it matters on today's Story of the Day. Support for Story of the Day comes from Pearsall Wealth Management at UBS Wealth Management USA, subsidiary UBS AG, member FINRA SIPC, 1 Broad Street, Glens Falls. Hey, I'm David Summerstein. It's Monday, July 31st. First up, an important state highway in Hamilton County is back open. State Route 28N, which connects Long Lake and Newcomb, was closed for almost three weeks after devastating flooding damaged the roadway and a bridge over Fishing Brook. According to Governor Kathy Hochul's office, the original bridge is beyond repair. State and local crews have installed a temporary steel panel bridge that'll stay up until a permanent replacement is built. For now, the roadway will be limited to single-lane traffic controlled by temporary signal lights. Later this summer, the temporary bridge over Fishing Brook will be moved, which will allow for two lanes of traffic and the construction of a new bridge. As repairs on State Route 28N continue, the governor advises drivers to be cautious while traveling in the area. A Messina man has been sentenced to at least 22 years in prison for the murder of a SUNY Potsdam student last year. Lucy Grindon reports. Judge Craig Carrero sentenced Michael Snow to a minimum of 22 years in prison on Friday for the murder of SUNY Potsdam student Elizabeth Howell in February of last year. Snow admitted to killing Howell last month when he pleaded guilty to second-degree murder charges. Howell was a 21-year-old music education student from Patterson, New York, studying at the Crane School. The St. Lawrence County District Attorney has characterized her death as a random act of violence. She was shot on a street near the SUNY Potsdam campus. She died at the hospital shortly afterwards. According to WWNY-TV and the Watertown Daily Times, District Attorney Gary Pasqua said Snow confessed to plotting to create bad press for SUNY Potsdam before he killed Powell. Pasqua said that Snow wanted to harm a former co-worker who was then employed at SUNY Potsdam by randomly killing one of the university's students. According to the Times, Pasqua said Snow tried to buy AR-15 rifles twice in 2020 without success. Lucy Grindon, North Country Public Radio. The North Country's children are just weeks away from heading back to school. I know summer may feel like forever, but it's not. In New York State, that means they have to be up to date on all their vaccines, like for measles, polio, and chickenpox. Carly Zimmerman with the St. Lawrence County Public Health Department says immunizations are still the best way to prevent illness and lasting impacts from vaccine-preventable diseases. Students who are not fully vaccinated, unfortunately, they pose a risk for creating a disease outbreak in their own communities just by attending school. Zimmerman spoke with Champlain Valley reporter Kara Chapman about how families can get their kids the shots they need and how COVID has affected immunization efforts. Uh, You know, at this point, I think most people have experienced firsthand that domino effect that can happen with spreading of COVID-19, you know, from one person to the next. And this can be really true for many other vaccine preventable conditions, too. So not just COVID. Right. And that kind of plays into another topic I wanted to get to. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, um, we've seen immunization of school-age children kind of face some setbacks, like when children weren't going to school in person for long periods of time. Can you talk about, you know, how did that play out in St. Lawrence County in the North Country and have things rebounded at all since then? Yeah, so the COVID-19 pandemic has definitely resulted in some difficulties and there's been some reservations regarding accessing health care, even primary care. So, you know, children that would normally have gone to see their doctor for their well-child visit and gotten their vaccines that they needed, it just didn't happen in that same frequency that it has, you know, the past couple of years. 
Um, we are still doing quite a bit of work uh, in education, getting information out to the community about increasing those rates of vaccination. Um, so it, it's certainly a work in progress. Can you talk a bit more about, you know, how people's approaches to and attitudes toward, you know, vaccinating their kids has changed, you know, over the past few years? Um, I think people have certainly, certainly have their questions regarding vaccinations. Um, and I think there's been some concerns regarding the rollout of the vaccines and the speed at which they were rolled out. So I think there's been a lot of concerns there. Um, However, there's been a lot of uh, information that has been put out about the safety regarding the vaccines and the requirements and the the rigorous studies that need to occur before those vaccines are actually released to the public. Um, But I think in general, um, there's just been a lot of concerns voiced. To parents and families who are feeling, you know, apprehensive about getting their children vaccinated, you know, what's your message to them? Ask your questions, you know, don't, don't be concerned and kind of hang on to that anxiety. You know, you can reach out to your primary care provider and they are happy to talk with you and they're the ones that are most familiar, you know, with you and your child's health. Um, you can also look at some resources online. We have information on our website at stlawco.gov. American Academy of Pediatrics, New York State Department of Health, and CDC are all great reputable resources to to get those questions answered. What's the easiest way for families to get their children vaccinated? Yeah, so certainly reaching out to your child's doctor's office, um, just seeing if they can fit you in for vaccinations or or calling to see what vaccinate vaccinations are needed. And we really are encouraging parents and guardians to do that now, (laughs) just before the fall, before those appointments start to fill up. Um, And if, you know, parents and guardians aren't able to get those apartments with their pediatricians, they can certainly come to our clinic here at the St. Lawrence County Public Health Department. And is there a specific cutoff date for when the kids need to have everything up to date before they can go back to school? As required, um, children need to have proof of vaccination within 14 days of the start of school. So children can actually be excluded from school um, if they don't have the vaccinations that they needed. And Carly, is there anything else that we didn't talk about that you feel is important for people to know? I think simply, you know, the importance of the vaccines themselves, the difference between actually the child actually having the illness and potentially having lasting impacts. I don't think we always quite think about the long-term impacts of a condition. I think we tend to think more about the acute illness itself. Um, And I think, you know, as we go forward, especially with COVID, and we learn more about, you know, what those lasting impacts are for people that have experienced COVID, um, I think we're going to find that with a lot of other conditions as well. I'm wondering if you have any, you know, kids, littles in your life that you think about, you know, when you're talking about like kids getting vaccinated, going back to school and how you think about them in, in that context. Um, I do have little of my own. Um, they're actually going to be starting some preschool soon. Um, it's a little bit more formal instruction. Being a parent with a little who was born not that long before the start of the pandemic, you know, concerns about infectious disease, I think, has always been on my mind with her. Um, so for my own, you know, child and own other littles in my life, I try to do my best to ensure that they aren't going to get sick, you know, washing hands and making sure that they're getting their vaccines on time. Um, If they are sick, you know, keeping them home. That was Carly Zimmerman with the St. Lawrence County Public Health Department speaking with Champlain Valley reporter Kara Chapman. Starting this week, her agency is offering back-to-school vaccinations on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Appointments are required. Other health departments throughout the North Country are also holding their own clinics. We have more news all the time on our website, ncpr.org. Music today by Christopher Watts of Canton and Tim Elifritz of Johnsburg. I'm David Summerstein, North Country Public Radio.